All right, hello. Today we are out here on the west side of Santiago, next to the Cerrillo Metro stop. And today we're gonna go see some airplanes. Let's go. Before we do that, I just wanna say real quick, thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. All right, back to the video. Museo Nacional Aeronautico y del Espacio, the National Air and Space Museum. As we got closer to the front gate, here the door, some more planes right here. That's like an older one, really way old. Fuerza Aérea de Chile Air Force, Air Force of Chile. Another one over there. Very cool. I'm getting like getting pretty excited. I see a bunch of people walking in and out of this place, so I think we found the entrance. All right, we're inside the gates. Some more planes sitting out here on the front lawn. This is what we were seeing from outside the gate, these ones. And there it is right there, the museum. And they have like this runway that you walk up to get into the museum. I think that's really cool. This is cool. This is already, you know, the thing with the museum is I feel like some museums are, you know, they're more subtle, right? That, that uh, pre-Columbian art museum we visited, just a very, uh, you know, unassuming building. And uh, you go inside and there's some really, really incredible stuff in there. Really cool. But this place, I mean, come on. They got like fighter jets sitting out on the front lawn, bro. A uh, whole runway. Just to walk up to the front door, all these helicopters over here. Come on. You know what you're getting into. Like with this museum, you definitely know what you're getting into. And I'm excited because I like, I don't know, I like planes. All right, so what do we got? Enair T-36 Hal Halcon. Pretty cool. I think, what if this is a fighter? Or a trainer? Or both? Well, I mean, it's a fighter. That one's got missiles on it. You don't fly around with missiles on you or on your wings unless you're, you know, going to kill something. Oh, look at this. They have it in English as well. Say low wing, single engine, jet powered, advanced trainer, and light attack aircraft. Okay, not a fighter. It's an attack aircraft. Blows up stuff on the ground, and it's a trainer. Spanish Air Force, Chilean Air Force, Honduran Air Force, Royal Jordanian Air Force. Cool. Okay, this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, for these, they got the, <laughs> they got the signs all the way back there. So I can't really read it, but uh, I can see that this is a Northrop F-5. I was right. Northrop F-5 Tiger III. Cool. Very cool. These things, from what I know about them, they were designed uh, as part of the uh, same, I want to say the same program that led to the design of the F-16, uh, the, uh, the F-16, the Viper. And this thing like ended up not uh, really like, you know, being used in the U.S. Air Force, except for like a trainer, I think. But then because it's so small, it's really agile and also like really like uh, easy to produce. You can produce a lot of them pretty cheaply. They were used uh, a lot in like other countries, allied U.S. countries and countries like that. They'd build these F-5s. So they were actually pretty common in like a lot of different air forces. This thing, I don't know. I don't know what it is can't see like I said they put the sign all the way back there behind it and the signs all like kind of old and rusty and I can't see what this is some sort of uh, older like 1950s era play in this guy I don't know anybody in the comments anybody know what this is any, any air, airplane nerds out there know what this thing is looks like it's got an air intake up in the mouth that's very like old. Maybe it's like a F uh, eighty six Saber. I think was the plane from back in the day. I don't know. One of the very earliest early jet planes, jet fighters. This one too. 
you could tell they're early jet fighters because they had the intake on the front like as like the nose basically it would just suck air in the front the turbines in there and shoot out the back a Marcel Dassault Mystery 4A so there you go French plane cool these are yeah, some older fighter jets though these two you can really tell the difference too like one of the original fighter jets jet like here very early from like the 1950s and then one you know more from like the 60s and 70s here real sleek got the intakes on the side twin engine on the back super aerodynamic compared to this thing very cool very cool i'm nerding out over fighter jets we haven't even gone inside the building yet god damn we got helicopters over here check these out sikorsky hss1 seabat very cool this is like, yeah, this is like a Navy. They use these for like search and rescue and stuff like that, I think, or they used to. So we get a good shot of it. Sikorsky, don't quite know the history around him, but he's just like a legendary helicopter designer. I think he was actually Russian, and I think he defected to the United States. I'm gonna have to look into that a little bit. See if I got that right or not, but I seem to remember hearing that that was the story. He like defected to the United States and then ended up making, uh, you know, helicopters and all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of very famous Sikorsky helicopters. I think even like the Marine One, the presidential helicopter in the United States is a Sikorsky design. Sikorsky helicopters, these, these like sea bat search and rescue naval helicopters, they always look so like clunky. It's just this big fat thing. Helicopters are crazy, like compared to planes. I mean, a plane is basically just like, you know, it gets its lift from the wings and you provide enough forward velocity and the thing just goes up into the air. And if it's designed right, it basically just wants to stay in the air the entire time. Um, because it's constantly getting lift as long as it's moving forward. Helicopters, those things are ridiculous. They're death traps, right? Like the rotor spins around on the top and it generates lift because each one of those, you know, rotor blades is basically like its own little wing. But like as the rotor spins, it like the force like pushes the helicopter to rotate in the opposite direction. So you have to correct for that. That's why they have tail rotors on the back, like on this thing. And then, like, when you're, when you're, like, correcting for that, then, like, you have to, like, lean it, lean the rotor forward to go forward and back to go back. But when you do that, you have to correct for that force. Basically, like, a plane, you just get it going fast enough. If it's, if it's designed right, it gets up in the air and it wants to stay in the air. A helicopter is basically, like, you using both your hands and both your feet to balance, like, forces that are all like in conflict with each other and the thing is basically just trying to spin out of control and kill you at all times or so i've heard i haven't flown either of them but that's what i've heard any pilots any pilots want to tell me if that's true or not anyway I've literally been outside for like 10 minutes it's time to go in right here right here in the atrium <laughs> it's like a biplane like a racing biplane hanging here upside down very cool so when you come in they give you a little guide here and uh, go around there's there's some stuff already here inside and it's basically a self-guided self-guided tour there you can see all the 
Inicio del recorrido, which means like the start of the tour. Oh, okay. So they're starting at like. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the dream of flight. Oh, they're there, yeah, they're. They're starting at the beginning here. Some pretty ancient stuff. I'm thinking this is like ancient legend of flight, right? Like gods and, you know, angels, stuff like that. Yeah, Archangel San Miguel. This is long before they were making fighter jets. You already know. You already know. Famous butt. Is that right there? Leonardo da Vinci. There's some, uh, all this old da Vinci stuff, his old designs. It's designed for a helicopter. Four people pushing this thing in a circle. Not a bad idea. Balloon designs. Lighter than air flight, of course. The first actual flight, lighter than air flight. Meaning like you have a balloon, has hot air in it. Hot air makes it go up. Very hard to control though once it's up there. It's basically just like go up, find a jet stream, hope it pushes you in the right direction. Hang gliders. Helicopter designs, or these early, some of these early designs are just insane. I love them. Look at this thing. Can you imagine? Can you imagine if this is the design that actually, like, <laughs> ended up working? Instead of hopping on to, like, you know, a 737 or something like that to get somewhere, you'd hop on one of these things. Crazy. The originals. Hermanos, right, the Wright brothers. I like that they're showing my paisanos here in Kitty Hawk. Yep, Kitty Hawk is the town where they first flew it. So the, the crazy thing, funny United States story for my non-United States viewers, the Wright brothers, they flew in Kitty Hawk, like North Carolina, state of North Carolina. But they were from Ohio, so like if you, the the two states both claim to be like the birthplace of flight, it's pretty funny. They have a little rivalry going on. Oh, look at this! First flight in Chile. Cesar Copeta. Very cool, 1910. First flight in Chile. In that thing. Had a bunch of like overflow planes here. <laughs> that like they couldn't fit, I guess, in the... Uh, couldn't fit them in the museum, so they're just sitting out in the backyard. Okay, these are actually pretty cool. <laughs> Look at this thing. See, I mean, it's just like... The wings are just wooden frame with like cloth on them, you know, to keep it lightweight before they had like aluminum. Look at this engine. It's so tiny. It's just a tiny little like two piston engine, maybe three piston engine. Jeez. Chilean. Everything's just controlled by like wires. All the control surfaces. Oh, someone's famous butt. Is that right there? It's 
crazy. I wonder if that, now wait a minute, that looks like uh, that one that we saw, the first flight in Chile. That one looks like, looks like it. I wonder if that's it. Is it? Who knows? Looks like they have some, all these chairs here. I wonder if they do like flight school graduations or something here too for the Air Force. Hmm. I don't know. Got some other like World War II era planes over there. Over there. This is cool. Let's keep going. This guy. I think this is saying this guy flew yeah they crossed uh, across the Andes in a plane Dagoberto Godoy Fuentealba apparently this is him up on everybody's shoulders being celebrated for doing such a thing And possibly this is the plane that he used. And this thing has a rotary engine. This is our this is like different kind of engine. And the early aviation days. <laughs> this has been so crazy. You just basically like have some plane that some dude built in like his backyard. Strap yourself into that thing and be like, I'm going to go fly over those mountains. Hope I don't die. Crazy. You know? Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this, this plane that someone designed that hasn't really been tested very much. And I'm going to fly it across an ocean. <laughs> it's just crazy to me. In this room, they're talking about linea. Linea? Linea Area Nacional, the national airline. And this plane, Linea Area Nacional, was this like literally the first national airline plane? There's one pilot and one passenger, basically. <laughs> we have an airline. If you want to go anywhere, you have to learn how to fly the plane yourself. You can bring one friend. This picture of a passenger plane actually back here on the wall. The glamorous days of air travel. Actually, flying on a plane like that would be horrible. <laughs> Those things fly like down to the really like turbulent zone all kinds of turbulence probably took you forever to get somewhere because it was really slow packed in on this super loud unpressurized propeller plane I know it was probably it was probably cool though I mean you know we complain about air travel these these days because <laughs> it's so common but I mean like <laughs> you're in a chair in the sky pretty cool <laughs> like a bird soaring this place that area is closed off over there but uh, got some cool other like World War II era fighter plane over there hanging from the ceiling looks kind of like a uh, I don't even know what that is this is a Spitfire or, well, it's a Chilean plane, I think. I don't know. You know what? I don't even know what kind of planes. I don't know what any of these planes are, honestly. I know you can go down there and look at all these things, though. So, we should probably get down there and see them from down there. Because there's some helicopters there, too. But, yeah, I have no idea what any of these planes are. The other thing is, like, I don't know how many of these planes were, like, developed, um, you know, like, somewhere else. And then, um... They're like developed somewhere else and then uh, they were 
like adapted into Chilean air industry, air force, or if they were like developed here in Chile, all of them. I don't know. You never know. You never know with these things because, you know, like, look, not every country like develops their own airplanes or all of their own airplanes. In fact, most don't. Most countries, you know, usually purchase uh, planes from other countries. So who knows? Here's an ATC tower here, or a replica of. Cool. That's the plane we saw in the picture. The uh, National Airline. Like one of the first passenger planes. Can you imagine? Loading into that thing with like six or seven other people and taking a bumpy ass long, very slow airplane ride somewhere. It, it was probably pretty exciting, to be honest. Cafeteria. Get yourself a snack in case you get hungry while you're here looking at all these airplanes. Ah, creation of the first National Air Force. March 18th, 1919. President Juan Luis Sanfuentes. So that was it, 1919. First Air Force in Chile. Pretty cool. Oh, here we go. Here's some more modern looking. There's the uh, F-5 we saw out in front. Back behind. F-16s. Very famous F-16s right there. The Viper. Yes, I do call it the Viper because I know that that is the preferred name and Fighting Falcon sounds stupid. There's the Sikorsky. The helicopter that we saw in front doing some rescue of people during a flood. Looks like a diorama of an Air Force crash in the Andes. That's uh, not very uh, reassuring, but that's okay. Some more seaplanes and helicopters and models of things. What are we doing? We're looking at models of planes. There's actual, like, literally behind me. <laughs> I'm looking at this little <laughs> glass box at little models of planes. And you turn around and the actual planes are, like, right here. Just, like, right here. Crazy. What the hell am I doing with myself? Hmm. Man, some of these early planes... Like this thing. Oh yeah, it's got the uh, machine gun on the front shooting through the uh, propellers. There was like a timing mechanism that like made it so that the bullets would pass, you know, in between the propeller blades and wouldn't, sh wouldn't shoot your own propeller. Pretty ingenious. I will say though, like these really early planes, like this thing, like not aerodynamic at all. This is basically just like a like a box. It's like a box with a person that slap some wings on it, a machine gun, and be like, alright, go go up into the sky and kill some people. Pretty crazy. Oh no, here we go. Chile in space. Hitos espaciales de Chile. This is like because this is an air and space museum. It's not just an air museum. Go is a model of the Mir space station. Estación Orbital Mir. First, when I came in this room, I thought, like, oh, this is going to be a timeline, a timeline of of Chilean space history. But it's a timeline of just like space history in general, space exploration, Soviet Union, United States. Britain, Great Britain, Apollo mission programs. First Indian satellite, Indian space program, 
Let's see who else is in here. France. Challenger explosion, which traumatized an entire generation of children. For all my non-American viewers, this, when it happened, uh, the Challenger explosion, the space shuttle, basically what happened was there was a teacher, uh, Christy McAuliffe, her name was, and she was like part of a special program that was kind of like a PR thing for NASA where they were they, they took a teacher, a school teacher, and trained her to be an astronaut, and like she was up, gonna go in this mission, and like so because of that, they televised the thing, the launch live, and they wheeled you know televisions into like every classroom in every school across the entire country. So basically, an entire generation of children were watching this launch, and like. I don't know, like a couple minutes after it launched, it exploded. And yeah, it traumatized an entire generation of children. It's pretty dark, but it happened. So it looks like here in Chile, there are a lot of observatories. Observatorio Astronomico La Silla. And satellite monitoring stations that I think they're like working with like in conjunction with NASA. And then here in 2012, in 2012 it ends. That's it's the end of space. Here's the Apollo 11 lunar lander. The Eagle. The Eagle has landed. Okay, well, I'm gonna duck, duck through this little doorway here. Not made for someone my height, that's for sure. Look at that thing. Now we're back out here amongst amongst the plains and the screeching children. Wow, look at this crazy thing. What the heck is this? This is like... Th 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 Gonna say, this is like when you let Homer dis Homer Simpson design a plane. It's got weird like bubbles sticking off of it. Strange looking nose up on the front. The engines are up on the wings. The wings are like way up above the thing. Look, I'm sure it's a great plane. Whatever it is, I'm sure it flies great, and it's actually a really, really cool, very smart, intelligent design. But it just looks weird. It looks real weird. Here they have a cockpit section of some sort of plane. Climb up in it and check it out. You see this on the video? There's a bunch of like glare and haze on the plexiglass here. Looks pretty cool. Man, all these buttons and switches and dials and gauges. I, I would I would have a panic attack immediately if I was trying to find one of these things. All right, here it is, Manu Tara. That's this gigantic, weird-looking plane, Manu Tara. I imagine the wings and the engines being on top is because it is a seaplane and is designed to land in the ocean. Fokker VR1 triplane, the Red Baron. Hundred years of the First World War. Oh, cool. Very cool. And I liked, I like that <laughs> back in the day, airplane design was just like, we need it to be more maneuverable. We need it to be able to turn better, get better lift, climb faster. Okay. Just put more wings on it. <laughs> one wing. No, no, one wing's not enough. Two wings. Nope. Not enough. Put another wing on it. Three wings. We'll even put a wing down here in between the wheels. Just more wings. Slap another wing on it. Can you imagine if that was the way that we just kept designing planes? Every like technological advancement for a plane. Just like put another wing on it. Until it was like ten wings all the way up to the ceiling. <sighs> Am I the only one that wants to see something like that? We can go out back. And we can see some of the planes that they have in the backyard here, I think. Let's see what this thing is. Ooh, now this big 
big, mean, sexy-looking fighter jet is what I'm talking about. That is a French Dassault Mirage. French fighter jet. French aviation, long, storied. They make really good planes. They definitely do their own thing. Super cool. Got the refueling, a uh, little nozzle on the side. So you can refuel in the air. Can look up in the cockpit. Yo. Hell yeah. Damn, look at this. It's cool. There's kind of a glare and the the and everything's kind of like faded. It's hard to see inside and on the video, but it's pretty cool. I'll, I'll, I'll let you know. It's pretty cool inside there. Look into the jet engine in the back. There's a bunch of rocks because probably kids threw rocks into the back of it. <laughs> it's like a bird has been nesting in there. But, I mean, come on. Look at this. It's got these, all these nozzles, like these, uh, things along the edge so that they can I guess open this up. I'm not sure exactly how, like I said, I don't know how engines work especially not turbines, jet turbines but I do know that there's there's all these like flaps on the back that have like hinges that they can open I think it's so you can like focus the the hot air that's coming out like if you close these in then the hot air is coming out through a smaller opening and it provides like more thrust maybe I don't know once again any airplane nerds in the uh, in the comments help me out here so a lot of stuff that's closed off here that you can't really like go and see up close which a little disappointing I would have liked to have gotten up close to like oh like this bad boy McDonnell Douglas F4 Phantom 2. Oh, it's right there, but it's like hard to see because there's trees and a fence in front of it. Man, they let me get up close to the French plane. They won't let me get close to the <sighs> close to the American plane. That's racist. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Look at it. Those things, man, those things were fast. That was like an interceptor. They basically just like, we're going to make a plane that goes really, really fast so we can get, like, as, <laughs> like intercept uh, enemy planes as far away from whatever the hell it is they're trying to attack. And we'll shoot them with missiles. I don't think that thing even had guns. You couldn't dogfight in that thing. You basically just fly as fast as you can. And then when you get in range, you lob a bunch of missiles and hope that you kill everything crazy. Oh yeah, look at the back of it. Twin, oh, twin engines. Whew. Fast. Fast those things were. See now like over here, there's, there's like cones, right? Am I allowed to go over there and check out whatever that plane is over there? I really want to. Maybe we're not allowed to go this way. We can go through this uh, gate here. Though. Maybe we can walk around and see that thing from the other side because whatever it is, it looks cool and I want to see it up close. Here's one we can go inside. I think we're going to go inside this thing. This is not the first time that I've been too tall for an airplane. In fact, every time I'm on an airplane, I'm too tall for the airplane. But, I'm especially too tall for this. Actually, right here. Right here I can stand up. I had to duck under that thing, though. It's really cool. Uh, let's sit down. Let's see what it felt like. air travel back in the glory days of passenger air travel 
not bad. Let's look at the cockpit. Actually, no, hold on a second. Before we look at the cockpit, <laughs> I kind of want to look at the back here. Which is like, I guess, like the galley. Where they would make food. And whatnot. Pretty cool. Alright, let's look at the cockpit. I will say that seat actually was pretty comfortable. Air travel might not have been so bad back in the day. Wow. Look at that. Cool. Alright. Let's duck out of under here. Try and not crack our head open on top of this thing. And here we have a... I don't know. And there's no sign. Help me out. Help me out in the comments. What is it? What am I looking at? It's military. Looks military. Uh, it's got an ejection seat, so it's probably military. It's got two engines. I imagine there's another one on the other side. I can't see, but it wouldn't really make sense to just put one engine on one wing and then have the other one with no engine. I don't know much about uh, aerodynamics and science of flight, but I do know that if you made a plane with just one engine on one side and no engine on the other, it probably wouldn't fly very well. Looks like it's some sort of a bomber. Doesn't look very maneuverable at all. Oh, look, see, some people have walked down past the, uh, past the, uh, the cones there. If they did it, I'm gonna do it. We're gonna look at whatever that plane was down there, because it looked pretty cool. I'm sure these cones are just to stop people from, like, driving up in here. Because I imagine out here, like, down where those people are, there's, like, access to a parking lot or something like that. Either that or they just had some extra cones and they were like, hey, where should we put these? I don't know. Put them right out there. Okay, we'll put them out here. Make things confusing for, for the gringos. Oh, wait. Here we go. This is a British... Aerospace Canberra PR9. That's what this is. And it does have another engine on the other side. So I was right. Actually, I think, if I remember correctly, in our video that we made uh, about the Malvinas when we were in Oliva, outside of Cordova, and there was the uh, Malvinas uh, Memorial. They had a bunch of planes out there in that field. I think this was one of them. I seem to remember that name, Canberra, PR9. Hmm. Huh. Have to go back and check, but I think, I think it was. I think it was the same plane. If you're interested in watching that video, link in the description. It was a pretty good one. There's lots of planes out there too, like uh, Argentine Air Force planes, stuff like that. But that one is a war memorial, you know? The, uh, the Falklands, Malvinas conflict. So that video was a little tone-wise, a little darker, a little more somber than this one. This one, we're just looking at cool planes. That one we were talking about, you know, a war where people died. So it's pretty sad. But look where we are. We managed to get all the way down here and see this and it is a Jaguar very cool Jaguar this is like a British plane I want to say it's a Sepcat Sepcat Jaguar E uh, no France never mind sorry France I know you got some bad blood with the British didn't mean to piss you off. I'm just an idiot. I don't know what I'm talking about. This thing is cool. This thing is really big, too. Compared to, like, that F5 that we saw parked out in front. You know how I mentioned they made them, like, small and maneuverable and easy to, like, build because of that? Like, it's hard to see on the video, but this thing is a lot bigger than that thing. Like, this thing is real big. This is a big boy, big chonky boy. Very cool. Oh, 
I think that's about it. I think we've seen everything. Went all the way through, inside, outside, front yard, backyard. I think we saw everything we saw there is to see here. It was really cool. I'm really glad I came. It's totally free. If you're ever here in Santiago and you want to see a bunch of cool planes for free, this place is here. It's right at uh, the end of the uh, Line 6 metro line. Yeah, come check it out. Come check this place out. All right, well, I guess that's it. Nothing left to see. It's just time to end the video. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, stick around. There's going to be a lot more. And uh, we'll see you soon.